Hi everybody, happy holidays. Welcome to another video. And today we're diving into the topic of digestion and anxiety and why they're so interconnected. A lot of, a lot of you guys ask me questions about supplementation. Which should I be taking? I heard zinc was good. I heard vitamin D was good. I heard probiotics are helpful. You have all these questions about supplementation, but the thing that you might be missing is that you can take top quality product, but if you have digestive issues like bloating, bile reflux, acid reflux, constipation, diarrhea, issues with your stomach, it doesn't matter what you put in, you're not absorbing the supplements that you take, even if they're 100% bioavailable. You actually become less bioavailable when you have gut issues going on. So today we're gonna talk, of course I have show notes here, we're gonna talk a little bit about why the digestive system is so important from a anxiety perspective and also why it's so important just for everything because your gut is home to 90% of your immune system. That's a big percentage. So let's dive in. So what's really happening when someone has inflammation, irritation of their gut, and why is that so connected to anxiety? What happens is that inflammation in the gut actually causes a release of cytokines, prostaglandins, chemical mediators that affect the brain chemistry. So what happens is when our digestive system becomes weakened, that actually can perpetuate problems in our blood-brain barrier, which blood-brain barrier is a separation between our digestive system and our brain. And so what happens is if we break down that blood-brain barrier, if we have inflammation, if we have cytokines, if we have all these prostaglandins, these inflammatory cells, we weaken the ability to protect and block things that should and shouldn't be in our blood-brain barrier. And I know a lot of you guys wanna know about that. You're like, I don't really get it. What's the connection between my gut and my brain like how how could there be connection there they're two different systems right no they're very integrated through the blood brain barrier okay so i just want to share with you guys that there is connection when we have digestive issues we actually perpetuate anxiety disorders when we have digestive issues we actually can perpetuate or have problems with um cognition brain fog whenever someone has brain fog or fuzziness you're just having inflammation in your brain that's what it means how does it get there it gets there through inflammation that's neck down or in the body that travels through that blood brain barrier so that's a very kind of known way we actually can develop anxiety disorders that's kind of the connection it's important for you guys to understand that because if you're dealing with anything from a digestive perspective you might now be able to see wait i can understand the connection what happens when the blood-brain barrier breaks down is now particles can travel through the digestive tract into the brain. How does this happen? So like what's actually happening? Why is my digestive system undergoing this process? Really what's happening is that cytokines, uh, tissue necrosis factor alpha, and CMP, chemoattractive proteins, can actually break down the intestinal permeability, meaning that it makes our stomach more able to let things in from our environment. Think of it like this. When you eat food, when you eat whatever it is, when you have salads, when you have, let's just do salads for an example, a lot of times raw vegetables can contain E. coli. It's not that it's bad, it's just that you know we're bombarded by these critters in our food. So let's just use that example that I eat a salad and I pick up an E. coli infection from the salad. Well, now that infection's living in me. And with a very strong digestive tract, problems don't arise. I'm able to, to get that out, filter that out through my lymphatic system. The problems arise when I have gut impermeability is the term we use, or basically a leaky gut where now my stomach, my digestive organs can be seeping some of these toxic compounds that shouldn't be in me into my bloodstream. Okay, so it makes intest increased intestinal permeability is the way we think about it. How does that happen? It happens through prostaglandins. It happens through cytokine production. It happens through tissue necrosis alpha. All of those cells we just talked about, CMP. We get this bombardment of these types of inflammatory cells. And now we're basically saying, come on in, microorganisms. Come on in, E. coli. Come into my body. Come on in, Staphylococcus aureus. Come on in. Um, helicobacter, you can grow a little bit more in my stomach. So that's what happens is that when we increase intestinal, per intestinal permeability or we actually 
don't protect our intestines, now critters come in. And this basically creates a whole mess inside of our body because now neurotransmitters get activated, our ability to travel, to produce and to travel the serotonin that we produce in our gut is affected. There's a lot of connections that can happen. So it's really important for you guys to understand there is a strong connection between the digestive system and basically the brain. We always talk about critters on this channel. We just talked about E. coli from a salad perspective. There are things called endotoxins. So endotoxins are compounds that are toxic to some of our insides. And endotoxins can actually release an entire inflammatory cascade to happen. So we actually can pick up endotoxins and then they create problems inside of our body. Endotoxins can be lipopolysaccharides. Endotoxins can be things that are on microorganisms like stealth infections. A lot of the stealth infections are considered endotoxin producers. They're literally toxins. So we are actually bombarded by endotoxin production. And then the reason that causes problems is because now we're releasing cytokines. We have a cytokine storm. We have this triggered immune system response. And all of those responses don't say, stay local. We don't just have issues in our gut. So maybe that's where it all started. I, I ate salad. I had this whole kind of process happening in my stomach. Cytokines were released. Everything happened. And now it's affecting my brain. Is that true? Absolutely. So through that increased permeability, we now have these toxic compounds able to pass into our brain. You know, with anybody that's out there watching this video and you are taking an SSRI, so a selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor, Wellbutrin, Paxil, Lexapro, whatever it might be, they actually will further drop down your serotonin levels. So long term, and a lot of you guys that might have been using these or have experience with them in your past, you might be saying, yeah, I, I realized how difficult it was for me to come off those medications when I wanted to stop because it can be very, very dangerous to come off unless it's done appropriately with the right kind of provider. The reason why is that when you are using these pharmaceuticals, your serotonin production actually goes down. It drops further. The body says, why am I going to produce serotonin if you're going to give it to me? Why would I go through the process of actually making my own if you're gonna actually just give me serotonin? So it stops producing its own. Now, interestingly enough, serotonin is produced in the gut. About 80% of our body serotonin is produced in our gut and it travels through the brain. And so we actually find a lot of associations that people that are dealing with depressive disorders or on pharmaceutical medication for depressive disorders and anxiety disorders often have really poor gut health. They're bloated all the time, they have acid reflux, they have tightness, they're burping, they're belching, their stools maybe are very, very loose, they have um, tenesmus, they have urgency, they have constipation, they're moving them one time a week, two times a week. These are all little indicators that when the gut is compromised, you can almost look for anxiety and depression in someone's health. A lot of you guys want to know about probiotics and the thoughts around probiotics. So the biggest misconception is that, oh, I have gut issues. I'll just take probiotic, right? No, I think probiotic have their time and place, but a lot of times they're not necessarily the go-to choice. For example, patients that are dealing with SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, whether it's hydrogen dominant, methane dominant, whatever it could be, they have too much bacteria, bad bacteria in their gut. Would it be right to just throw in probiotic into a SIBO gut? No, you don't want to do that. You're just adding more stuff. There's a kind of four step process that has to happen before we actually can change someone's digestive system when it comes to SIBO. The point is that I think probiotic, while they have their time and place, are a little bit mis mis interpreted as to what they're going to do. I feel like that's kind of like coconut oil. like. Coconut oil, dry skin. Coconut oil, add it to your coffee. Coconut oil, put it in your hair. Coconut oil, put it as a hair mask. Bad day, coconut oil. We have these things that just, they're like the holy grail. I always used to say if I was gonna be a food, I would be avocado or coconut oil because everyone loves them. They're like, put coconut oil on your cut. Put coconut oil, oil pulled with coconut oil. And there's so many reasons and uses people um, use this stuff. The point is that probiotic, I think, also has that kind of claim to fame that, oh, gut issues, take probiotic. Just take your probiotic, you'll be fine. Oh, you're not pooping? Just take your probiotic. 
no, that's not the way that this works. The body is so complex, so complex. So I don't want to endorse just taking probiotic. While there is a time and place for them, they absolutely can help and support people's digestive system. They're not always the go-to fail-safe fallback of gut health enzymes are so for those of you guys that don't know enzymes enzymes are in us there's nothing that we have in our body that is not governed by enzymes which are protein in nature nature so enzymes are actually the metabolic workhorses they're literally doing the job there's so many different types of enzymes in different categories so there's digestive enzymes metabolic enzymes reticuloendothelial enzymes um, lymphatic enzymes there's enzymes for everything so we really use enzymes or I use enzymes, I should say in clinical practice, as the go-to for supporting and repairing tissue. Supplementation, you guys know, it only works if you're able to absorb and process, which brings me to the next kind of thought. You might be putting probiotic in, you might be putting vitamins in your body. Who's to say that you're absorbing them? Often I have lab results and I'm looking and I'm like, well, you mentioned on your intake form, you're taking vitamin D and a therapeutic dose, 10,000 IUs. Oh, you mentioned on your intake form that you're taking vitamin C, you're taking all these products. When we look at your lab work, none of them are being absorbed. And that's the case with digestive issues, that if you have an underlying digestive issue, like I said in the beginning of this, you can put all of the product in your body you want, but the bioavailability goes down immensely. So that's not really the, the, the right approach to just take stuff because something is low. We wanna make sure you're absorbing everything as appropriately as possible. Back to the probiotic, I feel like we're going off a little bit on a tangent here, but bifidobacteria, so the, the recolonization of the digestive system through bifidobacteria actually really helps with depressive disorders because it upregulates M, um, mRNA genes that can help with GABA production. So GABA is a very calming, anti-anxiety type of hormone compound in our body, gamma aminobutyric acid, what happens is the whole family of bifidobacteria can actually upregulate the production and the synthesis of GABA receptors in our body, which is really cool. That just means that when I take certain bacteria, different types of probiotic, bifidobacter is in the family of probiotic, they're live organisms. Probiotics are literally live creatures. Um, that sounds weird, but they are. They're live creatures. So when we put them in our body, they actually can help upregulate genes, trans transcription factors, and GABA being so calming is something that we actually benefit from. So if we're dealing with anxiety, is it a good idea not to just take the probiotic, but to balance out the digestive bacteria as a way to support the person? Yes, the answer is yes, because when we support the bacteria, those bacteria are affecting what types of, uh, what type of basically neurotoxin, neurochemical transmitter, hormone am I able to produce or not produce? So it's always a good idea to think about, you know, gut colonization and good bacteria, bad bacteria, balancing both of those out to enable us to have good, healthy compounds. Something that's a little bit off on a tangent, but I'll insert it to share with you guys now, is that anybody that's dealing with high cholesterol, we wanna check their gut bacteria and the integrity of their gut because cholesterol is synthesized in the liver. A large part of it is a liter and a half is produced in the liver, but it's actually also synthesized by the digestive bacteria. So typically if someone's overproducing cholesterol, we actually go to their digestive system and look to see the integrity of the bacteria because you might be recolonized, overcolonized with bad bacteria that are actually producing additional cholesterol compounds. And so that could be something that we investigate if someone's saying, I have had high lipids, I have high triglycerides, high bad cholesterol, high good cholesterol, high total cholesterol, all of the lipids might be a little bit skewed. We always wanna know the integrity of the digestive system. Now in clinical practice, I will be extremely transparent with you guys everyone's dealing with digestive issues. I don't know that I have somebody that comes to see me. Well, maybe they're coming to see me, so that's why I'm seeing it. Um, if I put 100 people you know, in a room together, they weren't coming in, would they have gut issues? Maybe not, but the people that are seeking out treatment are dealing with a lot of digestive issues that can create low serotonin levels, that can create low levels of GABA receptor production, which can create a lot of bloating, which can create anxiety disorders. Some of the compounds that we produce through gut bacteria recolonization are very anti-anxiolytic or anxiolytic in general or producing anxiety just on their own. 
So we always want to look to the digestive system to see what's happening, who's doing what, when, to see if that's exacerbating your, your uh, pain syndromes. Is the same family, how we talked a little bit about bifidobacteria causing upregulation of the GABA receptor, it actually causes serum serotonin, I'm sorry, serum cortisol levels to drop. And cortisol is very active in the sense of anxiety. A lot of times what happens is that we produce cortisol through our adrenal glands. We have two of them. They live on top of our kidney and they're like little scanners. They're receptors. The adrenal glands are looking for stress. They're like, where's stress? Where is it coming from? Chemical, physical, emotional. When somebody has too much metabolic stress, they'll overproduce DHEA, dihydroepiandrostenedione from the adrenal gland, and they will also overproduce cortisol, which is a derivative of cortisone, which is a derivative of prednisone, which is natural anti-inflammatory. Normally, our body does an amazing job at trying to help us regulate what's happening in our world. So it's not that the body is broken, like it's producing too much cortisol. It's trying to kind of help you naturally produce your own version of corticosteroids or anti-inflammatory stuff, but it's being synthesized at a rate that's too high. So when someone's spewing cortisol or their cortisol values are, you know, not in a good place, we care about that because cortisol does cause weight gain, too much of it. In the beginning can cause weight loss, but too much over time. That's where we run into problems with anxiety as well. So that is something to be mindful of too, that when we're looking at what's going on with the gut bacteria, we wanna be mindful of cortisol, cortisone, prednisone, these different types of hormones that are being stimulated by the adrenal gland. And remember, the adrenal glands have their own, I guess you can think about it as their own influence but the signal comes from the brain. The signal comes from other areas as well. The ovaries talk to the adrenal glands and actually in the female body, the adrenal glands are the backup ovary. But the point is that we actually get brain stimulation through adrenal corticotropic hormone that comes from the pituitary gland. What's the deal with that? The reason, is, the reason I'm bringing that up is because our brain has a hormone or a kind of releasing hormone that tells the adrenals to do something. That's the connection between the brain and the gut is that there's cross reactivity there. So what happens is that through biofeedback loops, when our body is sensing, uh-oh, stress, anxiety, alarm, panic, it's gonna go to our brain and tell our pituitary gland, oh, pull back or add more stimulating or releasing hormone. And so there's the other connection between gut and brain. The adrenals, although they're not really part of the gut, they're in the kind of caliper. They're, they live basically um, within the digestive areas, if you will. So there's connection there. Um, and then we don't want that to be the case where we're overproducing adrenal corticotropic hormone. Now we're overproducing cortisol. Now we're downregulating calming, calming hormones that are supportive to us. I know I'm talking a lot about the science stuff. I think you guys can follow. I think a lot of you guys are, especially if you're into functional medicine, I'm so impressed with how much you know and how much how much research you've done on your own. You realize this, you're like, I know all about cortisol. I know all about GABA. I know all about these things because I've been looking and finding and trying to help myself through my healing journey. So I'm sharing a lot of science with you guys, but I think you'll be able to, to integrate it. And if you're not really understanding all of it, the best thing that you want to think about is there is connection between my gut and my brain. If that's the only take home point that you leave this video with, there is cross connection between those areas. I think that that's really all I wanted to share with you guys in today's little segment. The take home point is gut, 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 go to the gut. It's so important for overall health, for immune health, for digestive health, for well-being, for emotional health. All of it starts at the gut. And I know it can be a little bit confusing why, but when you start to understand some of these metabolic processes a little bit further, it makes a lot of sense. I hope that you guys are resonating with this and are like, yeah, this makes total sense. I realize that I feel anxious and I'm not sleeping and I'm, you know, ramped up. What's going on with my digestive system? That would be something to, uh, to be inquisitive about. I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I've been putting out some videos and I'm going to continue to do so. So if you wanna stay up to date with all the content, give the video a thumbs up 
and be sure to hit that subscribe, turn the bell on, turn the notifications on so that you guys can stay up to date with all the things holistic health and wellness related. And I'll see you in my next video.